Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Planty part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. In my discussion on gymnosperms. So now we will talk about angiosperms. So angiosperms are, as I said before also, it will include all the flowering plants. So here we have covered seeds. Okay. So all colorful plants which we see around us, most of them fall under the category of angiosperms. So some of the basic characteristics of angiosperms. These are the phanerogams with enclosed seeds. So the seeds are enclosed inside some structure and that is nothing but fruit. So they bear fruits. So here in this picture itself you can see plants with all colorful fruits and flowers. These are the flowering plants. So all the plants like rose, lily, whatever you see around yourself, they all fall under this category of angiosperms. They have broad leaves. So these are some of the these are some of the ways by which you can distinguish between a gymnosperm and an angiosperm. Gymnosperm, you will see no fruit, no flower, uh, needle-shaped, thin leaves. But in angiosperms, the leaves will be quite broad. These are termed as hardwood. Gymnosperm is known as softwood. Angiosperm is known as hardwood. So here some of the examples would be lemon, orange, rose, tomato, sunflower. And these kind of plants have a variety of sizes. You have small shrubs like the rose plants. You also have huge plants like uh, the mango trees. So they are quite big. So that their size is also quite diverse. You have smaller size as well as you have larger size. Talking about their habitats also there is a diversity in the habitats. Some of them are seen in I mean quite hot weather some of them grow well in cold weather so again the habitat also differs one important thing is that these angiosperms form the largest group of plants so we have been talking about so many different types of plants under the plant kingdom but angiosperms are one of the group of plants which are like a majority of plants they have got a good number of population. They, they, are, uh, they hold a good ratio of the plants that exist on earth. So let us now go ahead and try to see uh, the structure of angiosperms and uh, how do they reproduce the life cycle of angiosperms and stuff like that. So let us now look at the significance or the economic importance of the angiosperms. Why are we studying about them? So let us first look at their uses before we go ahead with the further study on their structure. They are a primary source of food for animals. Now when you talk about the food habits of different animals, there are many animals which are directly dependent on, food, dependent on plants. So for them, all types of plants are equal, whether it is angiosperms or gymnosperms. But there are a number of animals who are dependent on the fruits which are obtained from these plants. For example, we human beings, we are dependent on these angiosperms for fruits as well as vegetables. Right? So the angiosperms are a primary source of food for the animals. It also provides us oxygen to breathe because it is present in all our surroundings. By the process of photosynthesis, it keeps on adding oxygen to the atmosphere. So we can say that it provides us oxygen to breathe. Talking about its economic uses, it provides lumber, fibers for clothes, drugs. So these are some of the important uses of angiosperms. So now with this, let us now talk about the classification of angiosperms. Now, these flowering plants where the seeds are enclosed inside fruits, even they are classified into two types based on the structure inside the seed. So the basis of classification is the number of cotyledons inside the enclosed seed. So here we again found a new term that is cotyledons. So what are cotyledons? First let us see that. So cotyledons are nothing but the seed leaves. So when you look at a seed, inside the seed you have seed leaves. So leaf like structures. So these are structures or a pre-designed plant inside a seed. So what is a seed basically? When you actually uh, give proper water and light and everything that seed grows into a plant. 
So inside that seed, you have a small leaf-like structure, which is nothing but a, a design of the plant, which will actually come out of that seed. So that very small leaf-like structure is known as cotyledon. So these are also known as seed leaves because they are leaf-like structures. Now, in the flowering plants, all the flowering plants will have seed and their seeds are enclosed inside the fruit. Now, it is seen that there are one variety of plants which have only one seed leaf. That is inside the seed, there is just one leaf-like structure. Whereas there are other another variety of plants which have two seed leaves. That is inside the seed, you have two leaf-like structures. So based on these, so this is how a seed looks like. Now inside, if you look at the structure of this, this is, how, this is what is known as cotyledon. So the leaf-like structures. So here it has two leaf-like structures. You see a small root and a small shoot. The small root is called radical. The small shoot is called plimule. So when this seed actually starts germinating, this plimule will become the shoot and this radical will become the root. So based on this, it is classified into two categories, dicots and monocots. Now needless to explain, what is dicots? Di means two. So that means two cotyledons. Similarly, mono means one. So monocot is one cotyledon. Right? So now we will talk about dicots and monocots. So that itself will explain the structure of angiosperms. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.